What is good, ladies and gents? It is Divine Deck. It is May 20th. Padres just lost to the Atlanta Braves. 3-0. Chris, she- Chris Sale. Chris Sale. Chris Sale. Little shove job. Seven innings. Shuddy. I mean, nothing you can complain about, though. The Padres took three of four against a very good Atlanta Braves team in Atlanta. That being said, since we last recorded, they also got swept at home by the Colorado Rockies. The San Diego Padres, through 50 games of the Major League Baseball season, are 25 and 25. Some would say perfectly balanced like all things should be. Some would say mid. Mike <laughs> Devine, what would you say? Man, I, I would go with uh, perfectly balanced. But if you would have asked me on Wednesday, I would have said worse than mid. I would have said garbage. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's very interesting how this team is. Uh, I still don't have a full take on them yet. Um, I think they have way more fight than teams we've seen in the past, which is good. Like, they're never out of a game. I can tell that, you know, even when they went down today, I think I texted you and I said, I think we're winning this game. Last year, team rolls over cooked we're they're 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 it's 1 p.m eastern and they're thinking about hey what am i going to get when i get to the hotel in cincinnati <laughs> like they're over it but this year's team i feel like they they got more fight um i think the issue is and this is the issue with a lot of padres teams san diego sports as a whole we play down to our competition so we either play down or we play up we can beat any team. You said it great. We can beat any team. We could also lose to any team. It's not a the, – the, the sign of a great team, like a Phillies, a Dodgers, a um, – right now it seems like the Yankees, they beat up on the bad teams, right? Even the Giants swept the Rockies, right? Those are three games that are gimmies. Yeah. Like you shouldn't lose those games, and we games lose those games. Three games at home – um, that's not to say that the season's over because we lost those, but it's just like down the road when you're like, fuck, we're 84, we're an 83 win, 84 win team. And we, we really wish we had two more wins so that we could have been a, you know, four seed instead of a five seed or a five seed instead of a six seed. You're going to look back and be like, oh, maybe it's because we lost to the Rockies at home, got swept. We lost to these teams that are inferior. Um, and then we went on the road and we took three out of four against the one of the NL favorites going into the season. Like it's it's just the team doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I I think I tweeted this, but the 2024 San Diego Padres can be explained as this. They can beat the Dodgers, they could beat the Braves. But if they were in a three-game series against the Savannah Bananas, I would genuinely put money on the Savannah Bananas. They they play competition. Whoever they're playing is how they're going to play. They can play against the best. They can play against the worst. Um, On a bright note, that means if they do make the playoffs, they're going to make some fucking noise. They're they're a team built for the playoffs. Getting to the playoffs is going to be the hardest part. Right now, we're comfortably in the third spot. The Chicago Cubs are not that good. They are the same team that just got shellacked by the Braves last week, weekend. We've taken the season series against the Chicago Cubs. I don't think the Brewers are that good. The Dodgers and the Phillies are the best teams in the NL. We've beaten the Dodgers five. We've beaten them of eight games. We're five and three. They don't really scare me. The only team that's kind of scary is the Phillies. Obviously, we have to get there. The way to get there is by not getting swept by the Rockies. I won't lie. If we would have done a show, Mike, on Wednesday, the vibes would have been very low and that text me you said emergency you said emergency show tonight and it just I'm didn't work didn't out but thanks, thank thank god we didn't because yeah, listen people would- matt this team's gonna have a ton of ups this team's gonna have a ton of downs the thing is is that at the end of the season you just got to make it i'd rather have i, I the way i kind of look at this series right is or this week And Padres fans, maybe if you're listening, consider it like this, right? A win against the Braves is the same as a win against the Rockies. You don't get more wins because you beat the Braves. You don't get more losses because you lost to the Rockies. If you look at this week, would you rather have swept the Rockies and gone one and three versus a good Atlanta Braves team? 
or would you rather lose three games to a team that you obviously know you're better than and should beat and then beat a really good team three out of four? What do you rather – What what's the litmus test there? Would you rather lose to good teams and have the same record or would you rather have a fluke series where you lose three to the Rockies, which is fluke, this team is better than the Rockies. It's not a fucking, it's not a hot take to say that they lost. It happens, but would you rather go into Atlanta on the road and win three of four, which is a possible playoff series, by the way, you might have Very to go possible. into Atlanta. Very you might possible. have to go into Atlanta in a wild card series and try to beat the Braves on the road because they're probably going to be the first wild card team. If the Phillies hold this up. So this is a litmus test for postseason. The biggest thing is you got to get into the postseason. The issue that we run into is if we lose and drop some of these games, then a fucking bullshit ass team that sucks like the Giants is going to win three against the Rockies and put themselves in a position to jump us at the end. That, Just that, because they fucking beat the Rockies, bro. Yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, you're Mike. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. That was I was listening to you, and I was like, this, hey, this mofo spitting, man. That was some real. That was some real stuff, bro. I mean. I would personally take, you know, fluke series and then beating the Braves because you beat, once you start beating good teams, this team believes, I truly believe it. I think the fan base believes it too. I know there's always going to be a couple negative Nancy's out there, but I think the fan base believes we could beat any team in baseball uh, in a series. I, I I truly think we can. You Darvish looks like in that the best he's ever looked as a Padre and one of the best he's ever looked as a pitcher. He's insane. Dylan sees tough start today, but he's a all-star caliber pitcher. Robert Suarez, I mean, you, you keep naming names and you're like, wow, the three dudes that have been the kind of like, you know, disappointing at the plate, Tatis, Machado, and uh, Xander. Hopefully Xander's all right. But even Xander's starting to barrel up some balls. Man, he had that big double today. Tatis, you know, he isn't necessarily 2021 Tatis. I think we might have to start lowering our expectations a little bit of what we what we think he's going to be. But now, now, not to interrupt, but go into that. Why do you think we got to lower our expectations? I don't know if he is necessarily the same. I, I think he can be, but right now he hasn't done anything to prove in the last year and a half that he's the same 950 OPS guy that we thought he was going to be. That being said, he's still an incredibly valuable player and still our favorite player. But it, I don't think it's a hater move to say, hey, man, he's he has a 760 OPS right now. He's played every game. That's kind of shows. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Does that mean he is a going to be a career 760 OPS guy? Absolutely not. Ronald Acuna has like a 701 OPS or something. He has a lower OPS than Tatis. He did win. I want to keep but... seeing from Tatis. Number one thing I want to see from Tatis more of going forward is stop giving up at bats. He gives up way too many at bats. When he is on, when he's mentally on, he goes up there. He looks for his pitch. He doesn't swing at these bullshit sliders in the dirt. He doesn't swing at a first pitch that's off the plate and fouls out to Matt uh, Olsen at first base. He's better than that. Today, Luisa Rise works an incredible at bat. We're down three. Pierce Johnson's on the bump. Tatis comes up. First pitch, pop out. Profar comes up, gets a knock. Then Crohn's up, works an AB. Imagine if Tatis even made him throw three or four pitches there. Completely different, completely different ball game. It's fine. That being said, when you give Tatis grief, you got to give him some praise. Tatis's catch in right field today shows that, in my opinion, he is the most valuable player defensively in baseball. Right field is obviously not the most valuable position. You can make the argument that there's catchers that are more valuable. And if you make that argument, I understand. But watching him play day to day, the fact that no one runs on him. Have you noticed, Mike? You probably have. Ball gets hit weekly to... Uh, the first uh, right field, right? R fast runner on first base. Ozzy Albies is on first base. Marcelo Zuna hits a ball to right field. One out. Tatis is in right. Ozzy doesn't even think about going to third. Next pitch, ground ball, double play. Boom, innings over. That is not in the stat sheet. But when you watch every day, you see how fucking dangerous this guy is in right field. Other teams are scared to run on him. That's a humongous value add that doesn't show up. That's why I think he's insanely, insanely defensively valuable. You get that OPS to around 830, we're cooking. We're cooking. Yeah. And I think he could do it. I'm happy, man. I think, Mike, and I and I completely agree. Like, this team is better than – I'm excited to see them play the Yankees this weekend because if we take two or three and, like, dominantly against the Yanks, 
then I'm going to start really believing like, hey, man, like this team just needs to make the playoffs. Because, for example, Mike, this is a great point. 2023, the Miami Marlins made the playoffs. The Miami Marlins went some crazy. I think they went like 20, 20 and like seven in one run games. Fluke as fuck, right? They go in the playoffs to get their shit worked. That's a team like a San Francisco Giants, like a fucking Arizona Diamondbacks right now, where I'm like, they're not going to win shit in the playoffs, right? Like if the Dodgers, the team that the Dodgers and the Phillies, and and, and I want to see us play the Phillies in Citizens Bank. That's the most anticipated series I want to see because I they they slapped us in the mouth in San Diego. I want to see what we do in, uh, in Philly. The one team, if I'm in the NL right now and I'm the Braves or I'm the Dodgers that I don't want to see in the playoffs is the San Diego Padres. 100%. With fucking you Darvish cooking like he's cooking, Dylan Cease, a lineup that you know it's a matter of time before Manny Machado's OPS is at 780, Tatis's OPS is at 820, Xander's starting to barrel up balls, and then Profar has turned into a legitimate MVP candidate. He's not even jokingly fun. It's not even funny anymore. Like, if you watch day-to-day, he's by far the best player on our team. He's batting like yeah. 330 with a 940 OPS. Great defense in left field. It's like not even a joke. People are like, he, hopefully Profar can make the All-Star game. Motherfucker, he's getting MVP votes if the season ended today. He's <laughs> top five in MVP if the season ended today. He's playing oh, out sure. of his mind. Crone playing out of his mind. Jackson Merrill won't win Rookie of the Year because of Shota, but that dude, Shota, you're 30. Shouldn't win at Rookie of the Year. 21 years old, Jackson Merrill coming up with big hits. Campy's coming up with big hits. Kimmy's starting to swing the bat a little bit more. I'm liking, I'm liking the momentum, man. And we're going to have ebbs and flows. I'm going to start calling this season California Adventure. You know that uh, roller coaster ride? Yeah, I'm aware. California Adventure. What's that one roller coaster ride that uh, is like the crazy one? Uh, fuck. Soren California? Soren California. Is that what it's called? All right. Yeah. That's we need to come up with a, hey, if you're watching this in the YouTube comments, come up with a Nick, your favorite roller coaster. And Ooh. that's what we're going to start calling the uh, like the 2024 San Diego Padre season. Because Space Mountain, the Space Mountain Pods, baby. Hey, the highs are highs, the lows are lows. The darkness, you have no fucking clue what's coming. Cincinnati, they're in a skid right now. Hey, a good team, Mike, and then I'll let you go. A good team goes into Cincinnati. I think they're three and fourteen right now in May. A good team goes in, takes two or three, sweeps them, and then we go play the Yankees. At home, that series, if you take two or three in Cincinnati, you will be one game over 500 going in to face Juan Soto in his return. I mean, this weekend in San Diego is going to be, I'm pissed that I'm not going. Very excited for the reason I'm not going. I'm going to my buddy Brendan Fraser's wedding. But this weekend in San Diego is going to be an absolute fucking zoo, dude. Yeah. Win th- two or three against Cincy, have the vibes roll, and let's fucking ride, Mike. Mike, what's your take on the next two series? I know we got shit to do a little bit, so this is going to be a quick app. Yeah, I mean, my take is is really the Reds should not beat us. They shouldn't beat us. They're not good in comparison to what we are as a team. I don't think their pitching's that good. Um, really, it's just about the pods handling business, man. Go into Cincinnati. It's a fucking launching pad. If you're trying to get your offense cooking, if you're a guy like Tatis, the ball's been held in the yard a couple times this year for you. This is a place where you make good contact. The ball's going to fly. I need to see a couple homers from Toddy. I need to yep. see a couple homers or at least one homer from Manny. The other guys I feel very confident about. Manny's starting to barrel up the baseball. I'm feeling really good. Who, who's the one you're thinking of? Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the probable pitchers for uh, tomorrow. Oh, uh, let me. I what actually, are we playing? The Dolo? Are we playing the Dolo? Andrew Abbott, who's been pretty fucking good. Uh, three. Andrew Abbott's CRA. okay, but listen, hey, you know what tomorrow is? It's Abbott versus Musgrove, is what yeah. it is. And you know what? This is a ch- if Joe Musgrove gets cooking and he comes back and he pitches like Joe Musgrove's pitched at his best for the Padres the last three seasons, we are going to make the playoffs. The biggest question mark for this team is that. When you get to the back half of the rotation, you either get a fantastic start or you get an absolutely dog shit start. There's no happy medium. There's no happy medium. Randy Vieta, I would consider that a really good start Quality today, start. to be honest. Quality Six start. innings, three runs against a good Braves offense, except they didn't have 
Austin Riley and they had that Zach Short guy hitting the whole time. That guy's yeah, ass. Tough. But <laughs> um, listen, it's it's really you got to have consistency at the back end in allowing Musgrove to come back, fill a rotation spot, be consistent. Then you can really maybe move Randy into a long reliever type role. I think Waldron's probably earned the uh, the yeah, fifth start, spot, starter, starter spot over Randy V. Um, but that doesn't mean Randy V is a young pitcher, man. These guys, it's development. You don't have to throw them to the wolves. Let them develop. Pitch some as a like him and Brito in a similar role. Let them develop in a couple long relief roles. Um, and more. let's cook, man. Let's cook. Listen, we have if if I'm giving you a realistic projection or prediction on what I think, I what we asked this question a couple weeks ago. What would you be happy with if you look at this week? We got six games. Three against the Reds, three against the Yankees. We talk again next Monday, which we probably won't because it's Memorial Day. We talk again next Tuesday. Do we play? Do we play on we Memorial play the Mar- Day? We do. We play the Marlins. So Ooh. listen, Matt. We play a three-game set versus the Marlins at home. You have to win those games. Yeah. You have to take two of three. Yeah. Preferably, I'd love to see a sweep, but this that's team, beyond the point. This team needs to start it, sweeping, motherfuckers. Though, real hey, talk. Because when, me, when bullshit teams, sorry, when bullshit teams like the Giants sweep the Rockies at home. We're like a game of up on the Giants and Rocky or and D-backs now. We're better than both those teams. We, yeah. we put us in a series against them. Ten, eight times out of ten, we're winning that series. I truly believe it. That being said, if they beat up on the shitty teams and we don't, we might miss the playoffs. The fellas know this. They know it. They're going to figure it out. That Rocky series hopefully was a fucking slap in the face. Hopefully it was a, hey, Papa, wake up, motherfucker. Wake up. Man, I like it. I, I just, I think from now until the middle of June when we go into Citizens Bank Park is going to be the most pivotal stretch of the season. All right, we got the Yankees, which don't get me wrong, difficult team. We got the Reds. Reds, Yankees, Marlins, beatable. Royals, playing really well. Still think we're better than the Royals. I think they're they're 29 and 19, but I think it's a little bit fluke. Um, The Angels, no disrespect to our boy Brady. Not a good team. D-backs predicted they... Predicted the D-backs would be dog shit before the season. They're not a good team, in my opinion. Um, the Athletics, the Mets, also bad going into Philadelphia. There is a stretch where we play our easiest, probably our easiest stretch of the schedule of the season. And we have to at least get, right now we're 500. I'd like to see us at least five games above 500 by the end of that stretch. That's what I'd like to see. Five games above 500. That's winning every series. That's winning every series. Just win A. Guys, It's baseball is as simple as this. Sweeps are gravy. Getting swept is the worst. But winning series is how you make the playoffs. We beat the Braves. We've won like in our last, I think, six series. We've won. I tweeted it today. We've won five and we got swept by the Rockies at home. And the you gotta, against good teams. You have, you have to avoid sweeps. You have to try to get a sweep in there once or twice. But this isn't the pods are the pods, right? We're not the team that's going to go on this fucking 15 game win streak. As much as I would love us to be. It doesn't seem like that's kind of our game. So we're always due for we're always due for a choke one game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the Braves choke today. Hey, you're gonna you're gonna have those, right? We take it. I love your point on this being the most pivotal stretch of the season. If you were to tell me uh beginning of the season, knowing how many fucking good teams we play at the beginning of the year, we would end up May 20th going into Cincinnati at 25 and 25. I sign up for that every single day. Especially with Manny having a sub 700 OPS, Xander having a sub 600 OPS, Toddy, you know, not being an MVP at the plate like I kind of thought he was going to be. Like, you tell me that. Profar doesn't look like he's slowing down. Like, this dude, it's not like any fluke shit. Like, he's hitting the ball hard. Like, it's not like these bats are insane. Dude, incredible at bats. Jake has looked awesome at the plate. Like, I love where we're at, man. I, I, I need a big start from Michael King on, uh, we got Joe Musgrove, Michael King, and then I think Maddie Nux. And then we go in and face the Yanks, who I'm looking at probable pitchers right now. Probable pitchers, Yankee series. We got boom, boom, boom. Let's see. May 26th. Um, all right. There, yeah. TBD. So that does not help. So sorry for everybody listening. Um. I'll be honest, Reds, take two or three, move on. I want to beat the shit out of the Yankees. That's the one team where I I want them 
to come into they're feeling themselves right now bro i want them to come into san diego and i want us to fucking destroy them i want us to i want juan soto to go 0 for 11 with 4ks i want aaron judge to wish he played basketball wish he played football i want verdugo to look himself in the mirror and feel disgusted without having a beard i i want to beat them really bad that's the team other than the Dodgers, that's the team I probably dislike the most, especially after how people looked at us after the Juan Soto trade. Did we win the Juan Soto trade? No. Do you win trading Juan Soto? No. Every team loses when they trade Juan Soto, I guess, except for the Nats who fucking fleece the shit out of us. Now, did it make us better? I think so. I think it evened out the roster a little bit more. I Listen, agree. we had a little bit more money. If you think about it, too, we were able to go out and get Dylan Cease because of Drew Thorpe. We got Dylan C. and Michael King. Mike's a little bit, you know, shaky sometimes. He's either going to look like he's the best pitcher of all time or arguably the worst pitcher of all time. Um, but I'll take Mike King over, you know, pitching fucking Randy Vasquez every five days. Like, yeah. I think there's there's levels to it, right? Like, I think Juan that Soto... Said, Mike King was also in the trade with Randy Vasquez. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying I'd rather take Mike King out of that, that lineup. Like, we have depth because of that yeah, is what I'm trying to say. And I mean, listen, it is the way it, it is what it is. I mean, Juan Soto, if he was in left field, don't get me wrong. You move pro far. Um, we probably don't sign pro far if we have Juan Soto, by the way. And guess what happened? We get pro far and he's playing better than Juan Soto. Yeah, in mean, my he's, opinion. Pro far has been, so, been insane. There's he's a lot, shout, there's out for Barr on, uh, shout out for Bar on shout out Mary Cruz or Mar Marisol Cruz. Uh, she's the GOAT. Thank you for shouting us out. Um, we appreciate you. Yeah, man. Hey. 25 and 25, 50 games in. The fucking Magic Mountain pods, baby. Hey, the highs are highs. The lows are lows. Strap in. Thanks for watching. We're going to go grab some dinner with some friends. We hope you enjoy your night, your work day, whenever you're listening to this. Hit us up on IG. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. We will be back next week. And we hope everybody has a safe and fun Memorial Day. Thank you to everybody that served. And uh, go pods, go pods. All right.